So this is the Zion machine right here. This is about a $600 tattoo machine. Y'all see that? This also about a 680 Itinitas tattoo machine. This a $60 tattoo machine. This about a $180 tattoo machine. This practice, practice skin right here is only, only costs you $10. This costs you about 40. All the links are down below in the description. Make sure y'all click those and just get started tattooing. This is a real dope practice skin. Also, we're going to do this on a different day. This is about like $40 also. Works very good. I don't know the exact price. It's anywhere from $30 to $40. It goes up and down depending. I don't know. Real lit though. Tell me what y'all think about that. And today we're going to be doing this little practice flower right here. Check it out. That's my other page right there, the car tattooing shorts. Make sure y'all go check that page out. Make sure that y'all like and comment. Join the tattoo gang. But let's go ahead and get started. I think I want to go ahead and get started. Any questions or anything, make sure y'all comment those down below. Make sure I get that right angle for y'all it over just a little bit so y'all can see it a little better so we're gonna be running lines today with the Cheyenne Cheyenne craft that's a three-round liner all the links are down below like I said earlier let's get right into it though any techniques anything y'all need to know like I said comment those down below so normally when you're doing small tattoos like this, you want to use three round liners. But when you're really tattooing, most artists use five and seven round liners unless you're doing some fine detailed stuff. But let's see how this Zion hitting today. Run a couple of lines for y'all. Yes, sir. That one hitting real well. I'm going to switch over to the $60 tattoo machine for y'all. Show y'all how that boy hit. It's a little harder to adjust the needle, but it hit real good, y'all, no matter what. Hit that like button. Make sure y'all commenting, too. Sound much louder, though. This is the $60 tattoo machine. Y'all can get this off Amazon also. Let's see how this one runs some lines. Actually run that line real good, y'all. So that shows y'all that it doesn't really matter the machine you use. When you first start and you're on practice skin, you just want to get started. This the Itinitus machine right here. Let's see how this runs. He says, hold it down for three seconds. This machine does a lot of dope artwork. Has a lot of dope uh, techniques to it, too, y'all. Literally. You can do a lot of stuff with this machine. It cleans itself, so it comes with an autoclave case. It literally cleans itself, y'all. It ain't no other tattoo machine out with an autoclave case. Crazy. Okay, Robert, you say you're curious about the shading hand movement. Do you move it in circles? Or, so it depends. Are you shading black and gray or are you shading color? So with color, I like to go in circles unless I'm whipping it out. But I'll show you real quick like a, a little black and gray technique. So if I'm doing black and gray, I don't know which one you're talking about. So I'll just show you a little bit of both. So if I was doing black and gray, I would do like in my corners like some circles but then as I come out a lot of black and gray artists like to whip it out so they could transition to a different color so they'll whip it out like this so they do the panda they do the whip shading style it gives it more of a soft effect you know what I'm saying 
So it still works out well. It just depends on what you're looking to achieve with your look. Let me show you that once again. So you whip it out, it gives you more of a soft effect. Look real good for black and gray. But for color, I definitely recommend doing circles. What machine you working with, Robert? So that's the technique that you'll use for black and gray. It just gives you a better look. You know what I'm saying? So with that black and gray, you walking, Robert. And then I'll show y'all how I do it with the color. Let me move this one out the way. So if I was doing color, Robert, I'll show you the trick with color. So with color, I'll do um, black and gray. I mean, I'll do uh, circles and I'll show you how. So I think I'll color on this one. Maybe this pedal right here. Let me move that over a little bit. So I'm going to be coloring that pedal. I'm going to be doing some blue. Really some mint green. Very light tone. So if I was doing color, I would do small tight circles. How's my audio, y'all? Hit that like button if it's well. Comment, let me know if y'all can hear me. If I'm echoing any issues. Help a brother out. I ain't got my headphones today. <laughs> Appreciate y'all watching also. So you see what the color is always better. Oh, the Bishop Juan, my boy got that. He got the Packer in the shape. He got the Packer right now, and my other boy got the liner. The liner kind of hit kind of hard. How do you like that liner? This is the iTinnitus machine I'm using right here. This one works very well in the autoclave itself. Look it up. I have all the links in the description down below after I finish this video. And I have another video I did, like an unboxing with that also. But you see, like when you do the circles with the color, it actually packs it in there also very well. Audio all good. Appreciate it. Thanks for letting the brother know. Yeah. Let's get back to lining, though. So he actually liked to also line... I'm going to do a nine round liner. So he actually liked the line with his packer also, my boy. Have you ever tried that or you like the liner actually better? For me, when I was using the liner, it was kind of hidden, kind of aggressive. So I didn't really want to play with it too much. I think we all get comfortable with whatever machine we have. So this is Zion, and I'm going to push a nine round liner with the Zion first, probably just halfway through. I like to control my hand speed as I'm pushing my line. So that's the Zion. Packed it in there very well. I need to go get Q Bishop Wine and show y'all. But I'll use the antenna test today. Let's see how this one do with the nine round liner. So this has so many different things you can do, so many different levels. See that? And they all, some are for like pepper shading, some is for color packing, some is for lining. It's just a dope machine. I'd be coming out with way more videos on it where y'all can see how this one run also. Let me show y'all how this one run a nine round liner. I'm going to come this way where y'all can see it a little better. Normally when I'm tattooing, I like to be a little more close up. But since we got the cameras and everything, I'm going to keep my head back. Boy, see how quick that packed that in there? Came out real good. Robert, how long you been tattooing? You out there in California also? How Cali treating you? So California and Chicago, they got like the same tattooing laws. So they very strict on everything. Which is good because you need to have your bloodborne pathogens and everything like that. Be in a safe space because there's a lot of people out here not being as safe as possible. Like even if you're tattooing at home, set you up a room or a nice corner where you can really hook them up. 
everybody can't get apprenticeships. I wasn't able to get apprenticeship when I first started. Let me show y'all the shop real quick. And check me out now, you know. We got our own shop, so. There's levels to everything, you feel me? Don't let nobody stop y'all or tell you what you can and can't do. You can do whatever you put your mind to. Don't let nobody hate on you and tell you different. Definitely like a lot of old tattoo tours, they're stuck in their old ways. So they'll be saying stuff just to say it, just to keep you off like you're really a threat. When there's so much money out here, we all can eat. So don't let them hate on y'all out there, man. Keep tattooing, keep learning, keep investing. And we right here on YouTube University where y'all can learn everything now. They got online courses and so many, so much stuff y'all could do. How that flower coming out so far. And um, what are you guys having a hard time with out there? Like when you're tattooing, what's like something that's really giving you guys a big problem? Is it your lining? Is it like not knowing how deep to go? You want to be down in the dermis. You don't want to go too deep, though, where you keloate them also. But everybody has different skin, so you really have to learn the skin. That's why I think working on a practice skin is very good for a lot of people. A lot of people want to skip steps, but don't skip no steps. Because now if you're getting on a real skin and you get a shaky line or something, how are you going to know how to clean it up? You from D.C.? Oh, so I'm going to give you a, a trick on shading up to the lines real quick. So if you want to shade up to the lines and that's something you're having an issue with, it's, it's just uh, playing on the lines. So, so this line right here, I'm going to, even though you're normally an inside, I'm going to shade up against the line on the outside. So if you want to get close up to this line, you can also go this way. You know what I'm saying? Like come in on the line and then go that way. So I'll show you real quick. I'll give you a quick example. So if you have an issue getting up close to those lines, make sure that you're practicing right now on the practice skin because it's it's definitely hard. You'd be afraid to go outside the line. So let me show you real quick. Uh, look in this camera. There we go, right there. So I'm gonna show you how to come up against a line real quick. So if you want to come up against a line, you want to get close up on it and just whip out. Get comfortable with whipping out on that line. You can turn your needle sideways. Make sure that that needle facing the right way. And then you just come up. You can do your small circles. That's why I like small circles, because I'm not going to go outside the line with those. And I'm just going to push very light up against that line. But it takes practice. You want to do that a lot. Literally, it's like doing a push-up. Every day you do it, you're going to get better and better. You can see some of the best tattoo artists to this day, if you look real close at their work, some of them be going outside of that line still because sometimes tattoo artists be in a rush and they're rushing their tattoo. So make sure you're taking your time when you get close up against those lines. You go outside that line, you'll be happy. Oh, yeah, I moved it over. You can see it now. <clears throat> yeah, I had to move it over. One man army over here. What type of tattoo designs do you want to tattoo when you start? Are you looking to do everything or are you looking to go for a certain style? You know, some artists want to do color. Some artists want to just be black and gray. My boy Q, he got a good page for that. Q inks. Nice black and gray page. What's good, Mike? How you feeling? You still up on, you still ain't pull up on us yet. You say you out here gonna pull up. Yeah, so just make sure that when you shading up against those lines, you do circles, light circles. Don't do the whip shading until you get good at it. Practice on the practice skin. It'll come out good in the future for you. I've been tattooing now 12 years, going on 13. Self-taught, being around artists that had apprenticeships and everything. It's just all about your passion, bro. You know, like people going out partying and everything. Get yourself an extra hour every, every day on this. You'll be killing the game in no time. We got to get some time from work. Oh, okay, okay. 
That's all good. I understand. Let us know whenever you get ready. We here. What type of practice skins have y'all been using? Have y'all only used this one? Have you guys been able to use the fake hand? What type of practice skins are you guys practicing on out there? And what are you doing when you're practicing on a practice skin? Like, what type of tattoos are you tattooing? I need to move this camera around where y'all can see better. Hold on. I'm going to have to put it on the left side of me. Give me one second. From this commercial break, that'll be better for y'all. Then I can also move this around better. Yeah, that'll be much better. some type of artwork y'all want to see comment it down below let me know got my gloves all the way in the corner take that hot vest off get a little more comfortable Yeah, I think the left side will look much better. Since I'm right hand, let me get it right, y'all. A lot of cords and everything. I was just doing the lives off of my um, phone, but I found this setup to be much better. I can get a couple different angles for y'all. <clears throat> so would you like to see like black and gray on this flower today or color? I might do a couple petals black and gray for you. And then we could do some color also. Yeah, I think that's much better. Normally you wanna practice with like a paper towel, towel up under your practice skin. It will stop all the like vibration. I've been doing it for a while though, so I can deal with it. Also clients be moving and jumping when you tattooing them, but that practice skin will give you, I mean that paper towel will give you a little more stability on your practice skin, a little more cushion. How was y'all holidays too? How was y'all Halloween and everything? Who got dressed up? Y'all do a little black and gray for you. See, normally, um, depending on the artist, I like to start from my black and fan out. And some artists like to start from the light tones to the black. Because if you're not confident and you go too dark, you can never undarken it. So a lot of people like to work their way up in the black and gray world so they don't make those mistakes or put the black Put too much dark tones in the tattoo. Hey, Robert, send me some of your work on IG. My IG right there up at the top. Send me some of your practice skin. And how many have you done since you started? You in, Mike. You want to do one every day. I don't care if you only do 10 minutes a day. Just make sure you get that practice in. Act like it's uh, paying clients. Get this other stuff out of the way. Bust out that nine round liner on them edges. Me, I like to use a three round liner on most of my flowers. It just gets in there easier for me. And then I'm doing a lot of color and a lot of color packing. So I literally shade in the corners of my flowers to make it come out, pop out, out off the skin a little more. What you looking to do when you do start black and gray, Robert? You're gonna be doing like portraits, flowers, like what's your main goal? Everybody else in the room, what y'all doing? What y'all practicing? Are you thinking about starting tattooing? Like, what's y'all tattooing goals? Appreciate y'all watching. Also, make sure y'all hit that like button. So 
So I'm gonna just get through these lines real quick for y'all where we can get to some black and gray, you feel me? For fun, what I used to do, Rob, I wouldn't even outline this. I would just start like shading on the outside to see how good I can get my shading up against these lines. I'll literally be like right up in these corners like this and I'll just fade out that way. Cause I like my flower to get pushed forward with the black in the background. Let me go ahead and put a paper towel up under this uneven table. There we go. So when I'm working in them corners, I all like to be doing my small little circles, like I said, where I don't get out the line. And then when I want to, I'll whip shade it out a little bit with the mag where it can get softer. Y'all know it's just like a pencil where you lift up as you're going out, you want to lift up, not pushing too hard when you're going in the skin where you scar the person. But let's go here and get right into the black and gray. So I'm gonna start off from, so I'm using a, a couple different tones. I'm using pre-mixes too. So pre-mixed gray washes, I like the Empire brand. It's vegan and everything, so it's real good for the people's skin. In the healing process. So we'll start from the inside of this petal right here. So I'll start off black. It's my 100%. I'm using dynamic right now. Usually you want to use a bigger needle when you're uh, doing gray washes, but since this is so small, we're using a 7 curve mag. But I recommend like 13s, 11s, you know, 17s, like the bigger needles actually give you a more softer look. Definitely with that black and gray, you want it to look like butter. And you can even cut your machine down to get more of a soft effect. Let me cut this down to about like a six. Definitely, I'll give you some pointers. Congrats on even putting that work in to get better, to be a tattoo artist. It's gonna become your main hustle soon. So I like to turn my needle sideways sometimes and just give me some little light whips out from that dark tone. So we're going from a 100 to like a 50. On certain skins, you don't have to use a lot of different tones. It's all about your pressure and how you're getting to that next gradation. Let me switch up to this nine round line. I'm gonna rinse it out real quick. Nine curve mag, Cheyenne craft needle. I suppose I had some other needles coming in the mail. I'm gonna go check. I had a company sending me some. We'll see how those do too. But I ain't capping y'all. If they weak, they weak. I'm gonna let y'all know. No capping over here, you feel me? How much time we been at, okay. So these are my practice needles. So I normally keep the needles for a couple runs long as they're not doled out. So if they dole out, then I wouldn't, you know? So let's go ahead, get this off a hit. So you see how when I'm switching off, I'm just pushing lighter and I'm doing like bigger circles, but it's still gonna give you a softer effect. So if I do like smaller, tighter circles, it's gonna be looking darker in the skin but if I stay with the light touch like a pencil but make sure I'm still pushing with the right needle depth letting my machine do the work it's gonna smoothly transition from that dark to that light you see that where you can't really see the transition here you don't want to see that transition you want to kind of like have it smoothly glide into there me I work on brown skin though so I really like to have those dark dark because once it heals up on brown skin, it doesn't look as nice if you don't keep those gradations solid 
packed in there. So some people tattoo for the picture. I tattoo for the healing. So once they heal up, I want them to have a great tattoo where they don't have to come back and get it touched up. I still recommend touch-ups though. It's like painting the wall. It just makes it look better. But if they didn't want to have to come back for the pain, they'll be fine also. But you see the difference in those gradations. With this nine curve mag, it's working real good. I'll just go over that a little more from here to get it darker down here. And this is about like a 15%. It's the extra light wash. See that gradation? Comes out real good when you're using those pre-mixes. You don't have to, if you mess up on your drop system and everything, like the pros do it, so they recommend you to do it. But when you're first starting off, I don't think you should start that way. Because you come back on a tattoo or somebody quit halfway through a tattoo and now you got to remember exactly what drop you used in that location. But if you're using the pre-mix, you know I use this, 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 you know. Just easier to remember. But you see the smooth transition? And like, if you look close up against the corners, yeah, I do use premix. I like premix better. Because in certain people's skin, it doesn't all heal the same when you're using that, that drop system. Definitely in brown skin. Like, it kind of started looking flat. But I realized when you use the pre-mixes, it comes out better for me on brown skin. All artists are different, though. That's just my opinion. You'll get another artist telling you something different. That's why it's cool. It's our own art. You know what I'm saying? You want to do whatever you like to do. So make sure you're doing what you like to do. That's all that matters. You see how I'm doing this line right here, Robert? So I'm not gonna outline this line. What I'll do is I'll create a shadow under it. Just to show you how you can kind of learn how to play with your lines and get up close to them. Then you can run your line after, but you can literally just shade up under the lines. What I like to do is turn my needle sideways. So if you notice, I'm going sideways with it. So I'm turning it sideways like that, up against that line, and I'm going back and forth. Instead of coming widely, I'm turning it sideways. And I'm still going to make that line look extra clean. Yeah, the drop system, cool, Mike. But whenever you come up here one day, I'm going to let you use the gray wash system also, the pre-mixes. You're going to like them a lot. It's going to give you less of a headache. You can get right into the work. And you also can put a little more drops in it if you don't like how it looks. You could just go and put a couple drops in it and get a couple different tones also. Me and Q, we normally like to use maybe three or four different tones. Q also uses pre-mixes. Just depends. It saves a lot of artists money when they're doing their own drop system so they don't have to practice. But they don't have to waste any money. You feel me? You could just buy the dynamic pre-mix for a long time but I like the pre-mix because it makes your job much easier definitely when you're starting off definitely they got the uh, David Vega wash one so he created some good washes but think about that though Robert you see what I'm saying how I just shaded up against that line Mike what you been practicing on are you doing like um black and gray or are you doing um color what you working on more so too you and robert should also follow each other drop your uh, ig or whatever so he could check you out it's always good to follow people that's learning with you that's in your field i know in the tattoo industry a lot of people like gatekeeping they do not want to see you win see normally this needle will be cleaned out a little more I had some red ink in there, so it's giving it that little burgundy look. Let me make sure I clean this out properly all the way.
Have you been to any shops out there in Cali trying to get an apprenticeship? I always tell people, if you could save the money or you could afford it, save the money up. Get that apprenticeship. It'll be worth it in the long run. You're going to be able to make fifty to to $100,000 a year yourself. Don't think when you're working for yourself it's going to be easy because now you're doing a social media marketing. you editing. You're talking to the clients. Even when you're off work, you're not off work. You still have to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? So make sure that if you really want to be in this game, you're willing in it. You're willing to put in the hard work. Yeah, ever since I watched Ink Masters, I actually like to be an all-around artist, you know. I do a lot of color on dark skin, so that's what a lot of people know me for. Because a lot of people say brown skin can't get color. So I actually do a lot of color on brown skin. But I actually like to do everything. So that's why I like working with Q, because he real dope at the black and gray. So I like to see what he's doing and what, what skills he's using, what techniques. Always be around people that can push you and make you better. I know there's a lot of tattoo artists don't want to be around like other dope artists because guess what? They feel like they might not get picked. It might be a walk-in. They see a portfolio and they don't pick you. Kevin, what's good? You definitely didn't miss the live. How you feeling? I'm going to finish this flower out, so you here just in time. Just having some fun, answering some questions, and vibing out with the artists. Where are you located, Kevin? I started a little earlier today. I had some other people telling me they on the East Coast. Start earlier. I think I want to schedule this at least like twice a week where I really like answer some questions and make sure y'all go to my community post and comment what would y'all like to see, exact designs and everything, and I'll post them up so we can actually like tattoo with each other. So if you at home, you will be able to set up your, your stencil and everything the day before. So then we could hop on to some practice skin with one another. And y'all can ask questions as we go. I'm also going to be bringing some of y'all on, like inviting y'all to the lives and watch what y'all doing. You know, watch what you practicing with or whatever, giving you some critique. Self-taught dope. That's dope. So how long you been tattooing? You say self-taught. I'm self-taught too. Most artists going to be self-taught, y'all. There's not enough tattoo shops to apprentice everybody. Now that we had an internet, though, they can't really stop anybody, you know? You could really help. Everybody can help each other. Just start these communities where everybody could come together and help each other. That's what it's all about. A lot of people don't like to see people win. And I think you'll be blessed. The more people win, the more people you help win, you winning. So by next year, I want to help 100 tattoo artists get to make tattooing their full income. I'm going to build up a community. We're going to have weekly calls where we help build each other social media pages, teach y'all how to get credit cards in your business, get your LLC started, how to open up tattoo shops, even go into tattoo shops. So it's nothing wrong with working with another person. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with working in somebody else's shop. You can go in that shop, learn everything they're doing. So now when you open up your shop, you don't make the mistakes. You want to get in a good shop that's already running. You're going to learn what to do and what not to do. This is literally my fourth tattoo shop here. You know, my first shop I did it with three other tattoo artists. My second shop, I did it with one other cat. My third shop, I did it with the same cat. And this shop, I did it by myself. So it's all baby steps, y'all. I think we open up a different shop every three years. I didn't like how some of the artists was running running the shops. So I moved on to the next shop. And then the reason we closed the last shop is because I moved to Arizona. And I couldn't be there hands on. My business partner was there, so he had it running wild for a while. But he wasn't a tattoo artist, so I don't think the artists really respected him like that. They rocked with him a little bit, but I think after a while, they didn't like that.
Robert, don't forget to send me that work, man. I'm going to be waiting on you. But you see how that black and gray star coming together once you put in the black in the background, bringing it forward. Me, I like to have my black coming from under all the petals just so it can have a more 3D effect. So right here, I would have this more of like a 80% to 100% where you could just see where those petals overlap each other. You want to know where your light source is coming from and everything. Have you guys been drawn all your life or what? Oh, okay, that's dope. And that just show you, man, it's some people that got the natural skill, you know? So imagine he was self-taught. Imagine if he would have got in the game and it was somebody there to get him more techniques quicker. All I want to be is a GPS for y'all. Like what I did know, I want to be able to give y'all that game, you know? So what people, what it took me a long time to learn, even just in business or anything, is some stuff that y'all know that I don't know, you know? And that's why you want to always have a little circle or a community with a lot of dope people in it that's willing to help others. Because then once everybody help each other, everybody win. One person get on, everybody on. Don't be those selfish tattoo artists when y'all get on don't want to help people. If they consistent and they really showing that dedication, help them out. A lot of people say they ready to tattoo, but like I said, do 30 days of small tattoos. I don't care if y'all tattoo every day saying tattooing the word love every day for 30 days. You'll pick up a lot of dope habits. Oh, yeah. So, Mike, you got that clientele waiting on you. Have you been able to tattoo some of them? Have you got on real skin before? Oh, okay. That's dope. So, normally, I would leave more negative space open in these petals. But I just want to show y'all, like, the gradations, so... I'm going to fill out more space just to show the transitions. And you see how I'm doing small circles, but I'm pushing lightly. That actually gets it in there real nice. And it doesn't cause a lot of trauma on a client. When you're whip shading like this, it takes a little longer. I'm going to show you all the cross hatch method. My boy Q got a good video on it too. So you can cross hatch like this with some gradations to get like different tones so you can come this way first i'm just going real slow where y'all can see what i'm doing and then what people normally do to get it in there they'll come back the opposite way also so you're just getting different textures it's going to be a little darker you're not causing a lot of trauma to your client's skin either so you cross hatching, literally with a tattoo needle. Still a nice soft effect. Can y'all see that? Still nice and soft effect. Getting the details that you want in there. That's what it's all about, players. I like to wipe my practice skin off with ointment too. It comes off better. You use the green soap, it doesn't come off as much. So use the ointment, the Vaseline, whatever you're using. Ink teas, whatever you're using. Wipe it off with the ointment. Get much cleaner skin. But could y'all see that technique right there? So that's just a little cross hatching technique to get different modes. So I'll show y'all how to get a little darker. So if I want to get it a little darker, once again, I'll start off coming this way. I'm just going a little faster for y'all now. And before I even wipe my ink, I'll come back this way. So I'll turn the needle sideways and come back this way. Cross hatcher. Stay close as possible to that line you just created. Get a little darker tone. See, it's darker than that first one. So imagine if you're going fast in tattoos and doing that. You're really creating a lot of different depths. People just can't see it because the hand speed and the machine speed. So... 
even with circles, let me show y'all what I'm doing with my circles. So with my circles, I'm not, I'm not doing tight circles. I'm doing more, I'm doing more wider circles. So I'm going like this. But I'm gonna go slow so it's not gonna look right. Then I'll come back where y'all can see it. So you see how I'm doing my circles, but I'm doing them a little tighter than that. So I'm doing them like this. I'll show y'all next to it, but I'm gonna go fast and show y'all how I'm getting it in there. So I'm doing smaller circles with the mag, not pushing too hard, and then I always come back very light. Still smoothly putting it in there, not causing too much trauma. I'm using standard needles. These curves though, so curve mags. So you see that technique that I use right there though? With the circles. So let me show you again. So I'm gonna go lighter this time so I can get a lighter wash. Or no, I'll go darker so you guys can see. So the more circles you create, the darker it would be. And you don't have to apply pressure. Let the needle do the work. You don't want to cut up the skin. And this is with the 50%. So now I'm going to do another one with the 50%, but I'm going to push very light. And I'm going to show you all just off of needle depth also, you can create lighter washes. But you want to get deep enough. So it's just all little tricks that y'all want to use when you're tattooing. What needles are, do you normally use? What needles y'all using? Are y'all using the name brand needles? Are y'all using like some different needles? Comment down below, let everybody know. There's a lot of dope needles out there. If I use a cheaper machine, I all like to use a more expensive needle, at least. So if I buy the cheap tattoo machine, I want the expensive needles. I'm not gonna cut all corners because it go on people forever. And everybody don't have the money to start off buying everything expensive. But you could buy the needles, they worth it. It's gonna make you the money back. And it go on that client forever, so. Let's see how the tinnitus machine work. So it got different modes, y'all. So this machine could hit like a coil, give you a little more give. It could hit soft. Like I said, I have a video coming in the future. Breaking it down in depth. I just got it the other day, so I ain't really got to play with it too much. Been kind of busy, but I still wanted to bring it to y'all. I actually like how that's looking. Let me cut it down to about a six. You like quadrants? Yeah, so this is a nine round liner from Quadrant. I really like their liners. I also like Cheyenne, also. I just think it depends on the artist. Sometimes we hop around, so me, I normally also hop around. I like to try everybody, depending on what I'm working on. So I like the uh, Quadrant for like fingers and everything. It gets right in there, in and out. Machine actually dope. Let me try to switch the modes. So I got it in E mode now, y'all. Let's see how this mode work. It's hitting real soft. Controlling that needle hit way different. Oh yeah, it's more for like the whip shading. Oh yeah. Butter. 
I want whoever in Arizona too. Sometimes y'all can come out here, come up here, check out all the machines. I probably do it like once a month. If y'all come out to Arizona, we'll do like a little meet and greet. We can help one another once a month. Probably charge something like fifty dollars, a hundred dollars for a couple of hours of uh, sitting down, really helping with the techniques. I know everybody don't have the money up front. I also have a, a online course coming in the future where I'm gonna break down everything. How to grow your social media, how to get better with your tattoos, what books to read, what videos to watch, just to get better all around. But man, I'm really liking this mode. He sent me an email breaking down everything. What y'all think about it? Yeah, Mike, this this machine right here, like, it's up there. All right, tinnitus. Real dope machine. I ain't been playing with it too much, and, and I'm already loving it. Only a couple of days. They ain't paid me or nothing. They did send me the machine, but they ain't paying me to say that. When you come and you feel it in person, you understand. Definitely with all the dope modes. Literally, it clean itself, so it autoclave itself. Ain't no other machines doing that. Got a case where it autoclave itself, so. But for the black and gray, y'all see how it's coming out. It's definitely looking dope. Make sure y'all hit that like button, everybody watching. Y'all can comment, don't be afraid. Just having some fun. And remember, when you're practicing, you're just practicing. Don't worry about what nobody say. Even show yourself practicing. You're going to see your growth. Like when y'all go to my IG, you can scroll down to probably 2012, 2013. As far as possible, I never deleted anything. I want to show my elevation. I want to look back and be like, wow, I got better. I remember in the hood, I was charging $50 for tattoos, $30 for tattoos. I would be doing like 10 a day. It'll all go right back into my tattoo business. I literally didn't put none in my pocket. I would put it in tattoo shops, put it in tattoo machines. I would go home with the bare minimum. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to put it back into yourself. If you want to get better, invest back into yourself. Nobody can take that from you. Imagine like a GPS. If you learned how to get there and you didn't skip any steps, nobody can take that away from you. You have all the skills you need to show everybody the way. That's what it's all about, or at least your way. Because in tattooing, there's so many different ways to do things. But I'm having fun with this black and gray right here. Hey, this machine really almost feel the best out of all the machines, y'all, for the black and gray. Let me read the email he sent me about this mode. I'm gonna talk about the modes because this video don't even supposed to be about it, but just playing with the machine and how it's hidden, I wanna break it down to y'all a little better so y'all can actually know the different modes real quick. It'll take me one second. I think I got the screenshot. Right now I'm working in the efficient mode. So E, efficient mode. Y'all can probably screenshot that right there. It's number three. So it literally works for slow and soft. So it stimulates the machine like a coil machine. So that's why I'm really liking it a lot. It's for like stitching. It gets in there constantly and quickly. So E-mode for black and gray is the way to go. I'll do a video where we talk about this full machine, the full breakdown and everything. But let's go ahead and finish up this flower. And y'all, I'm running this on a 6.3. And it's hitting real good. A lot of people get paid for what? Oh yeah, for reviews, definitely, bro. And then you'll get the machine, it'll be weak, bro. I tell them I'm not, I'm gonna say whatever I want. If you send it to me, and it's weak, and it's a $700 machine, so this is the most expensive machine been sent to me. So I know they really was confident in their stuff for sending it, not talking about buy it and they'll send it back after I create a video and stuff. So y'all got to watch YouTube, y'all. There's a lot of artists out there buying it or maybe getting paid for it. I'm not getting paid for none of my reviews. I'm going to be authentic. I don't want anybody to go buy something that's weak. 
Mike, you out here in AZ. So one day you're going to come up here and we're going to do a live video where you can show them. You know what I'm saying? Kevin know they be on here capping, lying. There was a lot of machines that I could have bought. Kevin, what you say? Yes. I really don't know the cheap uh, cartridges, Kevin, you know. Uh, my boy, I, I forgot what he said he liked. Because, you know, in each state, they all different. You know how, like, the tattoo shops or the tattoo supplies will be having their own brand? So, I really don't know. I always buy. Since I first started, I always bought the expensive needles. Because when I would buy the cheap needles and I will get on somebody's skin, it wouldn't look sharp enough. I would have to go over the line a couple times, and I hated that. Because you're causing your client so much pain. So I always buy the more expensive needles. Just when I'm practicing, practicing, I'll use the same needles as long as they don't dole out. It doesn't matter when you're practicing. You're just having fun. As long as the needle don't dole out, you can use that needle for about a week. As long as you ain't pushing too hard and messing up that needle. Make sure you rinse them clean and you put them like in a little uh, Ziploc bag saying that you those are your practice needles. Never use the same needle twice on a person. Everybody know that by now, though. But I'm just going to say that once again. Never use the same needle on a person. Everything disposable. Use it once, throw it away. Make sure y'all get into, look into y'all bloodborne pathogens and everything. Only cost you like $30 online. Don't let these people lie to you and overtax you for something like that. You want to know this stuff. We dealing with all the cooties, I call it. You want to treat everybody like they got AIDS or HIV. You know what I'm saying? Be safe, y'all. Oh, yeah. So I'm just using different techniques. So when I'm going left or right, you know what I'm saying? I'm just doing more pepper shading. Let me show you real quick. So you're saying sometimes I'll do like this. So I'm just doing pepper shading. You know, when you play with the techniques, you could do multiples. So some people stay the same way. But if I wanted to look a different texture or a different curve, I might be working on a different curve of the pedal. So I don't want to shade it exactly like the one down here. I'm going to shade it like this, left and right. See, down here, it was this way. But now that I'm going up on a curve, I'm going this way. So I'll go at different angles. So I'll go like this. If I want to look at like a curve, I'll go, I'll literally do a curve in my shading. So some people literally go back and forth like this, like straight lines. But if I'm on like a curve and I want to have that texture, I'm going to go more like in a C mode or like a sad face, just to get a different curve in my pedal. It'll just make it look better, you know? That's for the real tattoo heads. A lot of people not gonna get that close up on a tattoo and see it, but just practicing it, it become real fun. Like, so when y'all working around those curves of your flower, try to like curve the needle to it and see if it give you a different depth, a different texture. So I'm gonna do it on this one right here. So I'm gonna do little C's cause I'm coming from here. So I'll just do like that. It just give it a more softer look, a little more movement to the pedal. See that? So my pedal doesn't look as stiff. And then down at the bottom, I'll darken it up so it look like it's coming from the dark to the light. Just playing with some light tones, some light sources. On a brown skin, you definitely need to use a lot of different light sources, like browner skin, darker skin. You need to use more negative space. You can't shade in everything because it's going to look like a blob from far away. So normally that's how I like to do it. Sometimes the practice skin don't give it justice all the way, but that don't matter. You're just having fun. And since this pedal behind there, I'll use a more darker tone, like a 50% to make it come out. How far do I hang my needle out? So some people work off the needle or work off the tube. I don't know if I can really click that to show y'all. Hold on, let me move your words out the way. Let me look in the camera where I can show you a little better. Nope, it ain't adjusting well. No, nope. not today. I have a day where I'll show you. Matter of fact, I can show you like this, so. 
I normally like my needle out about that like that far when I'm shading. I don't want it too far. So about a centimeter. Can you see that? I don't want it out too far when I'm shading. I don't want to go too deep. You can always just stretch the skin better to pack the needle to pack the ink in there. So when you're tattooing, make sure that you're stretching that three-point stretch. If y'all don't know what a three-point stretch is, I'm gonna show y'all real quick. So these two fingers are stretching it one day, one way, and then my palm over here is pulling it that way. So when I'm tattooing, I'm pulling it from three angles, and then I'm putting it in there. So that helped with the tattoo a lot. Negative space is the, the areas that I didn't shade. So you see how I left those light sources? That is negative space. So negative and positive space. So you know, like some people will fill it all the way in, but if you're doing that on like darker skin, it's not gonna come out well. It's gonna look good for your picture, but once it heal up, they're gonna look like a blob from a distance. Remember, most people are like a couple feet away from you when they see you out in public. So I'll show you like, if I fill this petal all the way in, even if I get lighter, it's still like too muddy. It's like you lose, the cur you lose the curves and everything in your flower because you're trying to shade everything in. So they all got different throws, you know what I'm saying? Normally whatever the machine come with is what I use, you know? A lot of people get deep down into that. Bro, you could use any machine. After you learn the little techniques, you could hop on any machine, bro. Um, not for me, because I'm working off the tip of my needle. I wish I could get the camera down lower where you could see it. But see, since my needle not far out, the tube is close, but I never want to be having it. Let me show you if I was to touch with the tube. You'll hear how it sounds. So you want to be listening for the sound. So it's literally like, that's too deep. That's like killing them. It's like you carving that person open. So I never get that deep. It's just going to be traumatizing to your client getting that deep. I don't know if y'all could have seen that. Let me do it again. So you don't never want to be touching the tube on the skin. Some artists do, but I will have that needle in much more. So let me show y'all once again. So just look at it. It's literally like a lot of trauma that will be caused going all the way down. You always want to have a little space in between the skin in the tube. That's why a lot of pros like to work off the tip of the needle. They don't like to work off the tube just because it's very dangerous. Everybody got different types of skin, so you might be not be in a dermis and going too deep and hurting them. Appreciate y'all watching too. Make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe, join the tattoo gang. Oh, you can see it? Okay, appreciate that, Kevin. Mike, bro, when you come up here, bro, we're going to do a video. We're going to have some fun. I wish I could have, like, a little tattoo school where everybody could come out for a month. And by the time you leave, you'll have the skills to start your career. That's something I'm looking to do in the future, like, where you could literally get like a loan or a grant from the state. And then I literally train y'all, me and my boy Q, on everything you need to know from social media to needle depth to going into dermis to your bloodborne pathogens to what needles work better, what you like better. Because it's not always about what we like. You might come in and thrive with different needles or anything. So. But you see how I go left and right sometimes, Mike? I just like to have that texture look. Q in violation for not being here. He could have read the comments. Did his little talking. Violation, Q.
Oh, I'm the goat, babe. Coming soon. I ain't the goat. I ain't the goat, but I'm I'm coming soon. I'm practicing every day to be one. From where I'm from, though, I came a long way, y'all. Self-taught in the hood, tattooing in the back room. People had to walk past my brothers looking like a Chief Keith music video to come get tatted. <laughs> I definitely came a long way, y'all. That's what it's all about. When you tattooing, you want to elevate every week, every month, every year. You want to look back and be like, man, what could I do different? So be happy with the small wins, but always remember what could you have done better. I meet a lot of tattoo artists, and they be very cocky with no clientele, barely making money. And you can really look at them and understand why they're not doing it. It's because of their energy. Because when you're tattooing people, y'all remember, this is an experience. You want them to leave with good energy, good vibes. You don't want them to have just a good tattoo, and they leave and be like, man, dude was a you-know-what. You feel me? So make sure y'all also getting to know y'all clients. They are investors in your business. They will go recommend their friends, random strangers on the street. Make sure if you see something that you don't like, you're fixing that line. You're cleaning it up. It's no rush. Never have like clients back to back where now the client on the couch and you sweaty because you're running too slow. Always give yourself like a two hour gap. Definitely when you first start and let the people know I'm just starting. So, hey, if you do come in, I had a client in front of you. You might have to wait a little bit. Get them a notice. Don't be strict on your clients. Remember they're investors in your business. And remember you a brand. When you're a tattoo artist, this is not like Burger King. If you mess up their order, they're coming back tomorrow. You mess up their order, word of mouth, they're going to let people know. Also that, they are might go on social media, leave you a review, anything. We had a lot of shops where tattoo artists wasn't treating the clients well. Or if they come in with $100, act like $100 is not a lot. Bro, if you just made $100 in an hour, that's a lot of money. Most people making $20 an hour. You made $100 in 30 minutes. It's really not 30 minutes because you did spend a lot of time like learning and educating yourself. But make sure you value those clients. They more than money. You need to know your uh, customer average value per customer. And it's not $100. That person with $100 going to at least tell five to six of their friends. So that $100 just brought you five or 600 Now those other five or six people are going to tell more. Now that's five to 6000 Y'all do the math. So that's why it's real important to have good vibes with your clients. Get to know them. Don't be sitting there just quiet, breathing. Really get to know your clients. Really get to understand who they are, why they pick you. Ask them how they found you. A lot of them are going to tell you, hey, this person told me about you. Or I seen you on IG. I seen you on this person page. Make sure that you text that client that they told, sent them, thank you, appreciate it. They're going to ask you why, tell them why. This person came, thank you. And you can do the discount thing. I know a lot of artists don't like to do that. But if they bring you a lot of clients, remember that's a good portfolio for you. That's a good person that can walk around and tell everybody about you. Because certain people like bartenders and stuff like that, they're going to be around a lot of people. Nurses, they're in a the hospital all day. You know, those people got that money. Treat them right. I don't care if whatever they came with. If you took it, treat them right. Don't say they was being cheap. Just treat them right. And guess what? They'll come and value you as you get up. A lot of people worried about the money than you just starting. Worry about getting your work out there. Do free tattoos. It's really not free because if you do a great job, they're going to go tell all their other friends. And guess what? You didn't check the bag. Hey, if y'all know this, man, I didn't use this machine the whole rest of this tattoo. That's how good it feel. And I'm going to show y'all like the different size of it, though. I'm not going to lie. When I first seen it, I was like, man, this thing big. Let me zoom that out. Bro, I first saw this machine. Y'all look at it. Compared to all the other machines, it's definitely big. You feel me? That's what she said. But 
You know what I'm saying? It's definitely big, y'all. And this machine is very lightweight. It's about the same weight as this Zion, I swear to God. They all the same besides the $60 machine. They about all the same weight. Let me get this Bishop wand to see the weight. Y'all can follow me through the shop. I'm going to take out a Q station. Got that young Bishop Juan. Bishop Juan kind of like wide. Q love that machine a lot. This is the Packer. It's never too late for you, Kevin. Um, I know y'all all know Nico Hernada. His brother started at 39 years old tattooing. And he killing the game now. It's never too late. Come on now. Like, most men live to, like, 80 to 85. You feel me? So you 40 years old. You still got 50% of your life left, man. Live it. And tattooing, you really could live it, man. You could work less days. Um, you might have to, like, draw more. But it's going to be something that you love. It's going to be able to – you're going to be able to meet a lot of dope people. So remember, it's never too late to start. Never. I don't care if you 60, 70. It's never too late to start. Just hustle, man. Really take your time every day. Mark down how much you're going to learn, how many hours you're going to put in. Within a couple months, bro, you will be ready. Definitely with the right guidance. We also offer courses here where you could come maybe three to four days and we sit down and we go over everything. Where you go back, you got all the skills you need and unlimited virtual help also. So, like, anytime you need something, you can FaceTime, hey, what a place this stencil? How to mark this up this way? That's all the things you're going to learn while you're here. If you want to come do that, but man, even if you don't got the money to do that and you just want to learn, I'm here. This Bishop Ron real lit. Also, y'all, Q really love this machine. But remember, Kevin, never too late. We all positive vibes over here, Kevin. Never be negative on yourself. It ain't never too late. I didn't think it was too late when I was getting evicted, getting all my stuff put out on the streets, you know. I just grind hard, and I'm still, I'm 35, you feel me? I've been tattooing 13 years. It was a lot of stuff. If I'd have got an apprenticeship, I would have knew better and quicker. But guess what? That don't matter, bro. That do not matter. There's no excuses out here in life. You know, just put your all in and life will give it back to you. You put that energy out every day, Kevin, it's going to come to you, bro. And I'm going to be right there like, yeah, that's my boy. He went crazy. Come out there and guest spot. You come out here and guest spot. That's what it's about. That's what you build these establishments for. So people can come and guest spot. People can come check out the vibes. People can come feel your energy in person, you know. Tattooing, you transferring energy. You putting, you marking a person up for the rest of their life. They're going to remember you forever. Every time they look at that tattoo, they're going to be like, my boy Dakar did it. Kevin did it. Mike did it. You know what I'm saying? Remember that. I'm going to do some little circles in here, y'all. In the future, we're going to do some real dope designs. I just like to get on here and talk to y'all, man, have a little fun. But I really want to do some lit stuff where it's going to be real educational. I want to make sure that y'all comment down below what y'all want to see. Because I don't want to do these videos just to be on here. I want y'all to be able to Spend an hour of y'all time really, really learning everything you need to be successful. Little techniques. Because, man, if you want to get strong, man, you just got to do push-ups, right? So this is the same thing. It's very basic. That's what a lot of artists think it's going to be like. A lot of different stuff is very basic. Oh, they're on my IG. So the course is on my IG. So, like, for the small tattoo course where I just teach you how to do smaller tattoos, I have it where you can finance it. Or you can also, you can finance it where you go through like a certain company. If they approve you, you get financed. And if not, you can just pay 2500 cash. If you guys already have your equipment, only 2000 So most of y'all got y'all equipment, so it'd be 2000 three days. 
You know what I'm saying? We go over everything. Needle depth, line weights, shading. We don't do color packing. This is the small tattoo course. So we're just teaching you how to get ready to go out there and do names, zodiacs, uh, all of the smaller designs where you can start making money immediately. You can also bring a guinea pig with you on that third day. We can have you tattoo them live if I feel like you're ready. So if I feel like you're ready, I'm going to be like, hey, bring your girlfriend, bring your cousin, tattoo your own thigh. But if you're not ready, I ain't going to let you do it. So a lot of people be ready to jump out the window. Do not ruin no good skin because you're thirsty. Take your time. I'd be like, no, bro, you can come back and we could do it this time or that time. So remember, it ain't no rush. It's only forever. That's the name of our shop. It's only forever. <laughs> no, y'all, but that machine was real fun. Oh, yeah, anytime, Kevin. I remember when I started, I was going into tattoo shops trying to get an apprenticeship. I swear to God, like, I had a friend taking my portfolio in there. And it, it, these are white-owned shops. I'm black. Of course, y'all can see that. So a lot of them would tell him yes with my portfolio until they found out it was for me. And they'd be like, oh, we don't do those here. Oh, 12000 Oh, 15000 And don't get me wrong. It's worth that if you have that. But most people that's trying to learn how to tattoo do not have that much money. So that's why I tried to make a cheaper option. Also going to have, like I said, an online course coming soon where it's going to only be $400, y'all. And I'm going to go through everything on how to do small tattoos. That means words, zodiac symbols, how to pack black, like all the things you need for $400. And that $400 should be able to make you anywhere from forty dollars to 80000 a year, depending on your hustle. So it's all about your hustle. So a lot of people just want to hear some information and don't do the work. I'm going to give you all the information to win. It's going to be your job to do the work. Nobody else's job but yours. And you need somebody to hold you accountable. I'm going to have like a little Facebook community. And it's going to have a community on the website that you guys buy the course form. And we can hold each other, we can hold each other accountable. Come on now, y'all. I've been YouTube in, what, two years? And your boy's still practicing. <laughs> you be stuttering. This live ain't no edits. Ain't no different takes. We straight live. You feel me? So. All day. But, yeah, how long I been on this boy? Hour and 14 minutes. Man. I have been on here long, y'all. I'm about to hop up off of here. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Tattoo Gang. Any questions, go over to my community post. Ask them. Send me some image on my send me some images on my IG of what y'all want to see tattooed, and we can do that next. And then I'll put it on my community post, and we all can tattoo it together. I'll literally um, schedule out when I'm gonna do my next live. But y'all gotta interact, man. I need at least this video to get to 100 likes. 100 likes, man. That ain't a lot. I've been getting like at least a thousand to eight hundred views on these videos. So back at about like a, a year ago, I was getting like thirty thousand, but I was too busy to do this. But now that I got the time, I'm gonna make the time. It ain't that I got it, I'm gonna make it. No excuses. Same thing y'all need to do with y'all future career as tattoo artists, as future artists, make the time, y'all. And I'll see y'all in my next video. I appreciate y'all watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. We out.